Hello, white people. I am on the website ProPublica.org, and the authors for this article are from the Noseberg tribe. The Hate Store, Amazon's self-publishing arm, is a haven for white supremacists. The company gives extremists and neo-Nazis banned from other platforms unprecedented access to a mainstream audience and even promotes their books. <laughs> Give me, a white man, a reason to live, a user posted to the anonymous message board 4chan in the summer of 2017. Should I get a hobby? What interests can I pursue to save myself from total despair? How do you go on living? Because this is how white people talk on 4chan. A fellow user had a suggestion. Okay, and this is also how real white people talk on 4chan. Please write a concise book of only factual, indisputable information exposing the Noseberg tribe, focusing on their selling of our high-tech secrets to China and Russia and their long track record of criminal degeneracy and perversion. The man seeking advice was intrigued. And who would publish it? And who would put it in their bookstores? That would make it worth the trouble, he asked. The answer came a few minutes later. Self-published to Amazon, his interlocutor replied. I use that word interlocutor at least once a day. Kindle will publish, publish anything, a third user chimed in. They were basically right. It takes just a couple of minutes to upload one's work to Kindle Direct Publishing, KDP, Amazon's self-publishing arm. The ebook then shows up in the world's largest bookstore within half a day, typically with minimal oversight. Since its founding more than a decade ago, KDP has democratized the publishing industry and earned praise for giving authors shut out of traditional channels the chance to reach an audience that would have been previously unimaginable. <laughs> and this is what this whole article is about. The Noseberg tribe here, these authors are having tantrums because wrong thinkers have access to writing content just like just as much as uh, they do it has also afforded the same opportunity to white supremacists and neo-nazis an investigation by ProPublica and the atlantic has found releases include okay forgive me if i brutalize some of these words Angelus, The Politics of Vesica Pisces, a polemic that praises the grossly underappreciated massacre of 77 people by the Norwegian neo-Nazi Anders Breivik in 2011, and The White Rabbit Handbook, a manifesto linked to an Illinois-based militia group facing federal hate crime charges for firebombing a mosque. All right, hold on a second here. So, if you firebomb a mosque, that's perfectly legal, but if you hate the people in the mosque, that's a federal hate crime. Is that what they're trying to say? And, uh, anyway. About 200 of the 1,500 books recommended by the Colchester Collection and online reading room run by and for white nationalists were self-published through Amazon, and new KDP acolytes are born every day. Members of the fringe group on 4chan, Discord, and Telegram regularly tout the platform's convenience, according to our analysis of thousands of conversations on those message boards, meaning these people don't have real jobs, have, sit have time to sit around, and stare at pe what people are typing online. There are literally zero hoops, one user in 4chan's politica politically incorrect forum told another in 2015. Just sign up for Kindle Direct Publishing and publish away. It's shocking how simple it is, actually. Even Brevik, at the start of the 1,500-page manifesto that accompanied his terrorist attacks, suggested that his followers use KDP's paperback service, among others, to publicize his message. He wrote a 1,500-page manifesto. I barely can write half a page of anything. 1,500 page. Whew, he had a lot to say, didn't he? That these books are widely available on Amazon does not seem to be an accident, but the inevitable consequence of the company's business strategy. Interviews with more than two dozen former Amazon employees... <laughs> <laughs> former <laughs> disgruntled fired employees suggest that the company's drive for market share and philosophical aversion to gatekeepers have incubated an anything goes approach to content virtually no idea is too inflammatory and no author is off limits can you hear the noseberg tribe members 
as members of social networks and other publishing platforms have worked to ban extremists, Amazon has emerged as their safe space, a haven from which they can spread their message into mainstream American culture with little more than a few clicks. And uh, they're just making the assumption here that uh, if somebody uh, has like some sort of little obscure idea, then all of a sudden the entire world, the entire country of America, 350 million people here, and we're all just going to pick it up. Bam! Because somebody posted it on Amazon. There's a lot of extremist content on Amazon, said J.M. Berger. <laughs> of the Nose Tribe, and listen to this title, who studies such works as a fellow with the EU-funded Vox Poll Research Network. So basically, this person can't get a real job either. The platform has gone largely overlooked because, understandably, we think of books differently than other content. But these products are for sale, and they're being algorithmically pushed. <laughs> ah, these people! Algorithmically pushed. Yeah, because uh, people who are interested in stuff, the more people are interested in something, it goes right to the top. That's just the way that it's designed. <laughs> we tested the recommendations for many far-right texts and discovered several that could lead users down a hate-filled rabbit hole where the suggested books reinforce a white nationalist worldview. Well, the problem is, is that people don't agree with the Noseberg tribe and they want to do what they want to do. For ebooks that retail between $2.99 and $9.99, authors keep 70% of the profits, and Amazon takes the rest. Amazon doesn't break out revenue for book sales or its self publishing arm. As a bookseller, we believe that providing access to the written word is important, an Amazon spoke per- spokesperson said in a statement. That includes books that some may find objectionable, though we have policies governing which books can be listed for sale. We invest significant time and resources to ensure our guidelines are followed and remove products that do not adhere to our guidelines. We also promptly investigate any book when a concern is raised. So basically, if you're a troll and you troll a book, then Amazon's going to investigate and probably pull that book. The growing influence of social networks on political life has prompted a national debate about what should stay up on these platforms. No, it's just the Noseberg tribe doesn't like it then people talk to each other and won't ex- won't swallow their bs anymore what should come down who's to blame and who decides following the deadly far-right violence in charlottesville virginia in 2017 because the noseberg tribe doesn't have anything on us so they're just going to pick this one little thing here and blow it out of proportion facebook twitter reddit and paypal cracked down on the activities of white supremacists and hate groups on their platforms In recent years, Amazon has barred several high-profile white supremacist authors, including former Klan member leader David Duke, from its bookstore. See, they've barred several high-profile white supremacists, and they can't come up with those names. Just David Duke, because everybody, I would assume pretty much everybody knows who David Duke is by now. And, And they're also saying that David Duke, because he's a wrong thinker, doesn't deserve to have an income. It does occasionally pull extremist books from KDP, sometimes months or years after... Now listen to this part, this is really important. Sometimes months or years after publication and often in secret without providing any explanation to authors or readers, but these removals appear to be the exception. So basically, Amazon, if if enough people troll you, they'll remove your content and they won't tell you about it. That is unethical and that should be illegal. I don't know. (sighs) Right here we go. Laws. (laughs) Uh, See, some people, they just have no boundaries. All right. KDP's terse policies do not address hate speech, racism, or incitements to violence, though Amazon reserves the right to remove any items from its store, including content that disappoints our customers or fails to provide an enjoyable reading experience. By and large, Amazon, which in the United States controls around half of the market for all books and close to 90% for ebooks, has become a gateway for white supremacists to reach the American reading public. Meaning, these Talmud lovers, Talmud readers, they, uh, they don't like it that people are uh, defying them and fighting against them. 
and not swallowing their BS anymore. Did I say that once? I think I'm going to keep saying it. The Southern Poverty Law Center calls Billy Roper the uncensored voice of violent neo-Nazism. Roper calls himself the most widely read living fiction author in the white nationalist movement. I have no idea who Billy Roper is. For several decades, he has led some of the white nationalist movement's hardcore factions, and today he runs the Shield Wall Network, a group attempting to build a whites-only ethnostate in southern Missouri and northern Arkansas, where he lives. See, look at this. Now ProPublica, they're pushing this. The group made headlines last year for organizing a protest of a Holocaust remembrance event at which they shouted the slogan, Six Million More. See, I would have never found out about this if it wasn't for ProPublica. Thanks, ProPublica. Roper is also a prolific author. Since 2014, he has uploaded 17 books of fiction and nonfiction to Amazon's self-publishing platform. His best-known works are the Hasten the Day trilogy, which takes place in the years after the United States is balkanized into multiple warring ethnostates, an outcome Roper considers inevitable. I was trying to find a fictional way of expressing my political ideas, Roper told us. Why is, okay, why is this Roper guy, why is he giving an interview to ProPublica? Anyway, because a lot of people find fiction more palatable than nonfiction when it comes to accepting an idea that they're not otherwise comfortable with. For those who fail to grasp the trilogy's political message, racist quotations from Je- Thomas Jefferson and David Duke are interspersed through the text. <laughs> In The Bulk, an essay collection self-published in 2015, Roper asks readers to imagine themselves in the world he depicts in his fiction. If your cousin showed up with his Mexican girlfriend and their half-Mexican kids in the middle of a race war and wanted refuge, that could put you automatically on a whole different side, he wrote, advising that the best way to accomplish discrimination is through prejudice beforehand, be prejudiced, and discriminate. I don't understand. I still can't understand why this Billy Roper guy gave an interview to ProPublica and talked to the bird. Don't talk to the birds. In a phone interview in February, Roper said, because this article was written in April, he said he has had his account suspended on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and VK. VK is a Russian alternative to Facebook, but not Amazon. Having his books on the platform, he said, grants him legitimacy and attracts new audiences. Attracts. It only attracts people seeking him out. My existence there has been beneficial in reaching people with my message and growing my organization, he said. People can go to Amazon, which is mainstream and acceptable. There's nothing radical about that. Order a book, and in the privacy of their own home, they can read the book without ever having to visit a white nationalist website. Roper is also active on Goodreads, the Amazon-owned social network for readers, where he frequently posts about giveaways, pitches his novels to book clubs, and tries to spark discussion of pro-white books, a popular recruiting tactic, according to Berger, the Vox Poll researcher. The Berger knows Berg. No job. Can't, can't qualify for a job. Has no work ethic, probably. But he's good at uh, trolling and uh, gathering information. Among the topics discussed in Roper's European-American reading group are whether it's useful to read books by the Nose Tribe and the Opposition. All right, I'm offended by European-American reading group. No, we are Americans. Just because we have European heritage does not mean that we are European. We are Americans. In 1789, we were declared Americans. Ah, this makes me crazy. Why does this Roper guy even get it wrong? I'm not European-American. I'm just American. That is my ethnicity and my culture and my heritage. All right, white people, I'm uh, done reading this because this thing goes on forever and ever and ever, and I will link it in the description. Thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your thoughts below.